The conducting cells are the electrical cells of the heart, the highly specialized cells. Now we're going to talk about the contractile cells. See, this is most of the cardiac muscle cells in the heart. They're contractile cells. These are the ones that are actually going to do the work and do the shortening or contracting. Um, kind of similarly to when we saw skeletal muscles, when we depolarize them, that's ultimately going to lead to the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Again, just like skeletal muscles, the calcium binds to troponin. That removes tropomyosin from the active sites. Um, on actin, then uh, uh, myosin heads can bind to the active site on actin. The uh, power stroke occurs, it shortens, we have contraction. Okay, so very, very similar to the way that muscle contracted once the action potential has progressed. It's the action potential that's very, very different in these contractile cells. Now, um, when we look at the contractile cells, the resting membrane potential is different than it was in the um, conducting cells. Okay, the resting membrane potential of the contractile cells is about negative 90 millivolts. Remember that means that inside the cell is about negative 90 compared to outside the cell. The threshold voltage is about negative 75 millivolts. Um, remember, what the threshold voltage is, is the voltage where we open ligand, or sorry, where we opened um, voltage-gated channels, right? So we need enough positive charges to get in to bring this from negative 90 all the way up to negative 75. And then if we do that, we open all of the voltage-gated channels, and that is what's actually going to be the action potential that can spread throughout the whole cell. And remember, it's not shaped like that. It's shaped like that. I would just draw circles. Okay, so this is super, super important. Okay, and again, I hope you guys revisit the whole concept of action potential a little bit. The different channels and all of that. So here we see the way that an action potential progresses in a contractile cell in the heart. Just think back really quick to skeletal muscle and remember when like this, I need good markers. Um, remember when like this, right? We had rapid depolarization and then rapid repolarization. That was the action potential. This is a very different action potential. So we've got, first off what we have is um, this little stimulus. And this little stimulus right here is when positive charges enter the cell. How do they get in? Via what? Gap junctions. Okay, so one of the neighboring cells has already been depolarized. It's got a lot of positive charges in it. Those positive charges don't stay put, they spread out. Right, they diffuse. So they'll diffuse into one of their neighboring cells. When you see that we're sitting at negative 90, enough positive charges leak in, positive, positive, we get less and less negative, we get to about negative 75 millivolts. And that's our threshold. Because at negative 75 millivolts, all of a sudden I open up all of my voltage gated channels. Okay, so I have this cell here and I'm sitting at negative 90, and because my neighbor's been stimulated, I have some of these positive charges leaking over, right? I'm less negative, less negative, less negative. Once I get to negative 75, all of my voltage-gated sodium channels open. And once I open up, voltage-gated, meaning they're gated by voltage. Voltage is what turns them on and off, a change in voltage. So once we get to that threshold, that negative 75, that opens all these channels. Where do we have more sodium? Outside. So once I open these channels, where's the sodium gonna rush? Inside. Okay, so I, then after I get to that threshold, I have a ton of sodium rushing into the cell really, really rapidly. So that's this huge spike you see right here with the number one on the graph. So look over here, you can see the voltage. Negative 90, we got to negative 75, then all of a sudden we bolt up super, super fast. We go past zero and we even start to get positive. Okay, that is that rapid depolarization. Again, it happens because of sodium entry into the cell. 
right? We open up the voltage gated sodium channel, sodium rushes in. <coughs> then once we get to this positive 30, that closes those voltage gated sodium channels. Okay, we start to pump sodium back out, right? We've got pumps that say you're not supposed to be here. They pump the sodium back out of the cell. So we start losing sodium here, right? So sodium, which is positively charged, goes out, but we open these slow calcium channels. Where is there more calcium? Outside, right? So we pumped all this positive sodium in, right? Then I close those, but I open calcium channels. And so as I'm pumping out the sodium, I'm allowing the calcium to slowly come in. So what I have happening is positive charges going out, positive charges coming in, right? Out and in. So overall, if you look here, my voltage hasn't changed very much. I have this nice long period of time where my voltage is relatively stable. We call that the plateau. This is the huge difference between skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle. Skeletal muscle, again, we depolarize, repolarize, right? Super fast. Here we don't, we have this plateau phase. Okay, again, sodium goes out, calcium comes in, so we stay at about zero, maybe a little bit above, but we stay at a really steady voltage. Then we repolarize, right? We've got to get polar again. We repolarize with potassium, just like we did with muscle. Okay, so over here in this repolarization phase, we open potassium channels. Where do we have more potassium? Inside. Inside. So when I open when I open potassium channels, potassium leaves. Okay, positive charges leaving makes it more negative again. Okay, so as all these positive potassium are pumped out of the cell, I get more and more negative. <coughs> negative, 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 until I go back to normal and then I can start it over again. Now, the reason that this is so important is because of the way that it correlates with these refractory periods. Yes? What's that word under plus charges? Where? On the sign. Uh, plus charges enter cell via gap junctions. Thank you. <laughs> What's the matter with my writing? Um, okay, is that okay, that process? Yes. Does the plateau phase um, have any correlation to the dissolving of the, no? The AD node? Yeah. No. Okay. No. That's just because those cells that are there, they just don't pass the impulse as quickly. Okay. Um, they're a little bit slower at passing it from one cell to the next cell. Would I, why? Uh, we don't know. Maybe their gap junctions are a little bit smaller, so it takes longer for the, the ion to get passed. Who knows? Um, but that's just because they are, they're a little bit slower at passing it from one to another. They actually are different in the way that their action potential progresses. This is just the contractile cells. Um, so again, positive charges leak in to get us a threshold. Once we're at threshold, we open our sodium channels. Sodium rapidly enters to depolarize. Then we close those, we pump sodium out while we slowly allow calcium in. We're trading positive charges in and out so we remain relatively stable during this plateau. Then we close those channels, we open potassium channels, potassium leaves, and that makes us polar again, brings us back down to threshold. Um, notice this huge absolute refractory period. The absolute refractory period lasts almost through the entire action potential, which is really long. And then we have this little relative refractory period right after it. So if you remember what refractory periods are, a refractory period is when it's harder to stimulate the cell to contract. Okay, and we have a couple different kinds. An absolute refractory period is when you cannot stimulate that cell. I don't care how much you throw at it, whatever stimulus, no matter how many times you try and stimulate it, it won't happen. It cannot be stimulated. The relative refractory period is when it can be stimulated, but it's really hard. You gotta give it a huge stimulus in order for it to, to contract again, okay? Or for it to, um, to be stimulated again. So 
When we look at cardiac muscle cells, these contractile cells in our heart, they have a really long absolute refractory period when they <coughs> cannot be stimulated. Okay, and then they have a little bit shorter of a relative refractory period. This is incredibly important. So when we look at, we're gonna look at graphs in a second, I kind of put them all together, but when we look at this actual potential progressing through um, a contractile cell in the ventricle, we see that the actual potential is about 30 times longer than it was in skeletal muscle. Okay, why? What phase makes it so long? The plateau phase, right? That plateau phase stretches out that action potential and it has a really long refractory period when we cannot stimulate it. What this does is, um, when we look at the graph, we'll see that it ensures that the heart can't be stimulated again until it starts to relax. Okay, remember when we looked at skeletal muscle, how it has summation, right, and tetany? We said that we start, to, okay, so there's one action potential, uh, or one action potential, and that's the tension, right? We start to build tension, and then we start to relax. But we can do this. We can build tension, start to relax, build more tension, start to relax, build more tension, start to relax, right? Until we get to these maximum tension levels where we have tetany. We want that to happen in our skeletal muscles, right? I need to be able to lift something up and hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Do you want your heart to do that? No. If your heart doesn't relax in between contractions, it's got nothing to pump and it's not doing any good. If your heart just does this really, really, really hard, you're not doing your body any good. It has to relax to fill with blood before it contracts again. So this long plateau phase and this long uh, absolute refractory period prevents the heart from locking up. It prevents summation and tetany from occurring. Make sure that your heart relaxes to fill up with blood before it contracts again. So here we see this. This is comparing skeletal muscle to cardiac muscle. Okay, on the top, um, we see the action potential, and then we see contraction. Okay, action potential and then contraction. And then you can see your refractory periods are on here as well. So if you look at the action potential in skeletal muscle, again, it's super fast, right? We have rapid depolarization and rapid repolarization. And if you look at the refractory periods, right, the refractory periods are really short. And then look at, so contraction happens a little bit after the action potential. Right, because of the time that it takes for the calcium release and to uncover the active sites and all that to happen. So there's a few milliseconds in there. So this is moved a little bit to the right. Um, but when you look at contraction, look, once it's even started contracting, we're past the absolute refractory period. So you could stimulate it again with a really big stimulus. And when it gets to peak tension, we're not in any refractory period. So it's really easy to build on this. Right? If you stimulate the muscle cell over and over and over, you can build on this tension pretty easily. Look at the cardiac muscle cell. Again, we have this really long plateau, so that stretches out our action potential, and we have these really long refractory periods, especially the absolute refractory period. And then look at contraction. So contraction, when it's at peak, we're in the absolute refractory period. We cannot stimulate that muscle, period. And over here, when we get to the relative refractory period, we've already started to relax quite a bit, okay? And really, once we get out of the refractory periods, we're like completely relaxed. So again, the point of that plateau and the point of that long absolute refractory period is to ensure that the heart has time to relax, pay a considerable amount, before we stimulate it again. We do not want summation and tetany to occur in our cardiac muscle cells. Um, this is kind of, just calcium does the same thing as skeletal muscles. Okay, um, we need calcium to be increased around our, um, around the actual myofibrils to allow the actin and myosin to interact. Some of the calcium, like 20% of it's gonna come through the calcium channels, so from outside the cell, from the extracellular space. The rest of it's going to come from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Okay, when that action potential goes through the cell, sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium, and just like in skeletal muscle, um, the calcium binds to the troponin that removes it from the tropomyosin. Um, 
and then our actin and our myosin interact with each other. Okay, maybe we have some time for part three. Mm -hmm. I was terrified that I wasn't going to end it. Potential progresses the way that it's different than skeletal muscle. 